To successfully breed, turtle doves need access to food, somewhere to nest, and water for drinking and bathing. These three things should be in close proximity and ideally within one kilometre of each other. Juveniles in particular need seed-rich feeding sources close to nest sites. In this section we'll discuss access to food and we'll talk more about nesting habitat and drinking water in the next video. In the introductory section, the lack of arable weed seeds during the breeding season was highlighted as a key factor in the decline in the UK. So let's now focus on how you can create seed rich feeding areas on your land. Turtle doves eat seeds from a wide range of common arable plants like fumitory, chickweed, clover, speedwell, scarlet pimpernel, black bindweed, knotgrass, red shank and fat hen, at least some of which will occur on almost any arable site. Turtle doves will only access seeds where vegetation is relatively short, sparse and with lots of bare ground where they can see seeds that fall or are shaken off through their pecking and where they can see any danger approaching. Gappy low growth must therefore be maintained for feeding plots to be usable. There are two main ways to establish feeding plots. Allowing natural germination of plants from the soil seed bank or sowing a tailored seed mix. Combining areas of both side by side to provide a wider range of plants might be advantageous in many cases. Creating feeding plots on areas of poor, lighter soil will make maintaining this sparse structure much easier than on fertile sites, and especially in dry years. On light land, an area is known to be important for rare arable plants, allowing seed bank regeneration is generally preferred over sowing. If in doubt, then create both cultivated areas and areas with sown mixes as an insurance. Margins can be cultivated post-harvest, along with the rest of the field, then simply be left undrilled. Where autumn germinating species are present, this allows some species to set seed early the following season in time for the arrival of doves. Where the seed bank contains mainly spring germinators, spring cultivation will give better results, but seeding will be later in the summer. The most common management needs of turtle dove plots are likely to be the topping of problem weeds, and mowing and scarifying to maintain low sparse growth. Something like a spring thyme or inter-row hoe to disturb 60% of the soil is needed mid-season to maintain the open structure, followed by cut and remove mowing in September. The frequency and timing of these operations will depend on soil fertility and weather conditions. Should the autumn flush contain too many pernicious weeds, such as blackgrass and thistles, the opportunity could be taken to control these and then cultivate again in the spring so that wild plants can germinate then. Alternatively, such weeds can be topped before they set seed. Establishing feed plots by sowing a special seed mix containing turtle dove food plants to improve the seed bank is another option. Again, the land is cultivated post-harvest and the mix is then broadcast very thinly and rolled in for autumn establishment. Topping to control problem weeds may be required, but any food plant weeds are of course welcome. As before, plots will need to be maintained by mowing and scarifying to ensure an open structure. Given variables in soil fertility, weather and other conditions, each plot will behave differently from year to year. But the most important thing to aim for is the maintenance of an open structure with 25 to 60% bare ground so the doves can access seed. Because the turtle dove is at such risk, supplementary feeding of a specially formulated mix may be recommended where turtle doves are present and still known to breed. But ideally, juvenile turtle doves need naturally occurring arable plants in their diet to attain good body condition. It is important to minimise any risk of disease transmission by scattering the feed mix, never delivering it via a hopper or in heaps. Scattering mix on newly created feed plots weekly from mid-April will attract other birds to feed and hence alert arriving turtle doves to the food source. The seed-rich feeding plots created with turtle doves in mind 
will also benefit a wide range of other farmland birds, including several declining species such as grey partridge, yellowhammer and linnet. So even if turtle doves don't take advantage of them, creating arable feed plots will have many other important benefits. So we've seen the main way to help turtle doves on our farms is by creating feeding plots, either by sowing or by allowing regeneration from the seed bank. Join us in the next video to find out more about the nesting habitat and water requirements of the turtle dove.